Hi, I'm Brian. I'm going to do an install of a super lift suspension 2.5 inch 2014-2013.5 uh, radius arm equip leveling kit. And if you got all that, you've got some pretty good listening comprehension. So anyway, long story short, I ordered this from Steve White Motors off of eBay. They totally forgot about me and when it didn't come almost three weeks later I started a case to get a refund through eBay and BAM! Four days later it's here. So awesome. Way to go Steve White Motors. They had the best price on it on the internet and it, they had a good listing. It was very specific so I knew I was going to get it. Um, 20 bucks shipping, 120 bucks for the kit. It seems to be a good kit and it's easier to install than some of the other kits. The reason why, these mats are heavy duty, they're powder coated, they're not going to rust. Um, good quality stuff. You got a long bolt and a securing nut or flag nut as they call it in the instructions. And that's the way most everybody does these, is they do them like that. But on the driver's side, there's an ABS pump in the way and it's a pain. All you got to do is get this to stick up inside that spring mount. That's all we're trying to do here. And uh, they got a flag nut on one side and then another nut and bolt on the other that just makes it easy. The downside to this kit is there is some drilling. You have to get a 3 8 inch drill bit and I'm going to show you a trick for drilling with uh, Bow Blue. It's a lubricant that's designed by Boeing, the guys that make the airplanes and it's going to make our job a lot easier. The nice thing about this kit, one other thing that I would like to highlight is that it has a shock relocation bracket so you can keep your stock shocks and that way you don't have to mess with the tough country ones that I don't really like very much and you can uh, go with the same factory length so that's great and that's where the drilling comes in is there's a hole on the back side here you have to drill so this kit's not too bad if you're not afraid of drilling and you're not afraid of drilling if you have a good drill bit and some of that bow blue it just gets right through it it's awesome you're gonna love it so you're gonna need a, a hand sledge some sockets and things um, it's helpful to have a little pair of needle nose vice grips and uh, I'll show you why. Alright, so the first thing to get the vehicle up on jack stands, you have to support it. These are those radius arms. They copied Ford. They're tired of having the death wobble complaints, so they did the radius arms. It's a good system. And it looks like the bushings on these will be a lot easier to replace than Ford's, but you put a jack stand behind those. Once that's in place, it allows the front axle to be able to drop down. I've pulled the wheels off. Everybody knows how to do that. We need to undo these so that we can get the axle to go down. We need to get the axle to go down so we can get this to go down and make room for uh, the spacer we're going to put in. Now I'm going to cover one other thing. Caster is this angle. Caster is going to change. Um, the reason why is because when we lower this axle, it's going to swing basically on this radius, radius arm bushing, radius rotation. So instead of being at this angle, it's going to be at this angle here, and then we'll have it down to here. So that's going to cause it to be forward like that. So then we're going to use this adjustment right here, and we're going to push this out. We're going to kick this out a little bit. So essentially what's going to happen is we're going to go down, uh, it should be like this. We're going to go to this, and then we're going to kick it back out like that. So you do have to do an alignment after you do this. We're going to take our needle nose vice grips. Don't grab the boot or tear it up get a little bit above it on that solid material, push it right up against the bottom of the sway bar, and get your 18 millimeter socket, put it on. We're going to shove into the wheel well thing here. You don't have to pull the whole thing off unless you're a masochist. If you drop this axle down, it's going to cause that to pull right out of it. Get a 21 millimeter socket for your tie rod. And it'll just drop right out. Piece of cake. So this is undone, uh, our tie rod's undone. You can let it hang down or you can rest it in here on the little Y. That's what I do with mine, is we're gonna have to undo the bottom end of the shocks. If you're gonna put new shocks on, just go nuts on it and uh, remove the whole thing now. These have flag nuts on them. Just hold on to the flag nut. Looks like this, sticking out the bottom. I went through and painted everything with engine paint because I know how these things get all rusted if you don't. And I figure if I got a new truck I wanted to preserve it and do it right. So take these and we'll set them aside. We're going to use these in the top part of our bracket here in a minute. So pull that back and then just move it out to the side like that. Then take a 13 millimeter socket or half inch and now this thing will fit in there. Set it to loosen and pull the bolt on your brake line. This will save you a bunch of headache and stress later when we go to pull this down. 
So now this is able to flex and move and do what it's got to do. And there's another bracket right here on the side. Pull that one as well. There we go. Looks like that went in kind of crappy at the factory. So we got lots of slack. We're not going to stress about it. And we're ready to start coming down on this side. So we'll go to the other side and get it ready to be dropped. Same process, but with the track bar. We'll show you the track bar part. I've done all the same things on this side that I did on the other, namely the shocks loose, the brake lines are loose, and my sway bar and link is loose on the top. You see there's no nut there. So the next thing we want to do is get the track bar free. So we have a 27 millimeter socket. we've got another flag nut. When you go to put this together make sure your flag nut is pointing in and up. Should be enough to pull out this way. So we'll retain these. We'll be using them later when we put it back together. Just use a little magnet dish and that way I've got my two bolts for the brake line nut and bolt for the shock, nut and bolt for the bar, and I have my nut off of the top of my stabilizer end link. So the track bar's down, it'll ride down with the axle. You can hear that settle, can't you? So I'm all settled in, and as I come down, I want to stop and check it periodically and make sure that these are coming out okay. Something's hanging me up on this side. Let's see if this will come down some more. Hurt things get slack. You gotta come down pretty low to make room for the spacer and get the spring out. I need to check this side, make sure everything's okay. It's not wanting to come down for whatever reason. Take a paint pen, uh, like the Sharpie oil paint pen or whatever, and just mark your uh, strut tower. In my instructions, it says that my spring should be facing to the back, but in reality, it's facing forwards here. So just take a paint pen and just mark that. You do a little paint palette on top of your ball joint since this pen doesn't want to work. Way to go, Sharpie. There was these ones called Uni that I loved. I could find those all day long. They were great. Now i got to deal with this Sharpie nonsense. Might be a good idea to loosen the bolt on the radius arms. This barely clears out of there. So as you can see, I've got the spring out, but that bushing's in there. It's got an alignment tab. Now some of the other brands, they make you cut that off because they're all flat and smooth. But the nice thing about this one is it actually uses it and helps keep that in order so it doesn't change or create a problem. Now because I marked this with a pen, it doesn't matter as much that I didn't notice which way I put it down because I've got that mark. On this side, we just take this one uh, with a long bolt. So you got medium sized bolts, one long bolt, and then some longer bolts. The longer ones go on that side and they bolt this in on each side on these tabs. Put our bolt up through here. Get this lined up with a mark here. Stick it in there. And then take your flag nut. Now I need to get a 14 millimeter socket and the flag nut is supposed to just hold on its own. Or that ABS pump nut on the other side. The other side would be just as easy. You guys have all seen these before, but instead of a nylon nut, they're crimped over a little bit at the top and so they really bind going on so you don't have to use Loctite. You could. I don't think it hurt anything really. So what I'm doing, I'm making sure that my bolt holes line up in case I want to add a bolt if there's a vibration or some stupid thing. Make sure that these still line up and they do. We're good. So I'm going to just drive it home the rest of the way. instructions that will tell you a torque measurement to give you a check box on each side make sure to read all of this before you do anything of course this is what we're doing on this side so when it says to do this illustration 3 so looking over it you see illustration 3 okay passenger side coil illustration 3 you take this bolt and then you see there's a 30 in parentheses that means 30 foot pounds so we'll torque that to 30 foot pounds and we'll throw the spring back in here 
Be all ready to put this spring back in. I'm gonna make sure that my jack's down low enough. So I got my paint mark ready. Put the, I don't know if I want the bottom or top in first. Looks like the bottom would be easier to put in second. I'd be wrong. Wonder if it'd be easier to get that tab in after the fact. You can see where this terminated on this bushing before. I think I'm going to jack my jack back up and loosen that radius arm bushing bolt because it's really holding that in there. That looks to be a 27. Get the other side first on here. There's still a vent tube that's connected going to the front axle up in there. Might be a good idea to disconnect that as well if I'm going to go real low. It's just easier to have the axle be lower than to try to fight the spring. Use a spring compressor too, but what's the point? Boy, I feel like the guy that the Tupperware guy's selling too on Napoleon Dynamite. Here, try to put a tear in this. Ugh, can't, can't. It's freaking not getting low enough. I don't see anything holding this back though. Other than the other side jack is holding it up. That's my problem. Alright, we'll let it down. That'll do. Oh shit. That'll give you all you want. Alright, is that enough? Now are you happy? Damn girl. Apparently this is a female Yeti. I'm going to take that vent off. I got to pull you out and show you this. Look at that. We got the axle clear down on the ground. I did disconnect the vent tube for the differential. It's just, you got to go so stinking far to make this work and to not have to work so hard at it. You just want it to get down. That's what we've done. When we look at this now, I mean, I can just set that in there and now I've got to jack it up. To meet the rest of it those are kind of terms i can deal with so track bar stabilizer end links um, brake lines all that kind of stuff you get those done the shock bottom of course and you're good to go i'm just jacking this up until it's close you got to remember that in order to get the spring in the other side this has to be low enough so there we have it we're looking good let's go to the other side and get that other one in on the one tons there's not always a hole here I'm told by the instructions you can see that I have one all this plastic out of the way you can see it light up just a little bit right there so we take our bow blue you know as bowing paste take our drill bit now bear in mind that your expensive ABS computers under there you drill a hole in it that's not going to be covered under your warranty um, but you take some of this paste the two things happen to this paste when you start using it it starts getting runny and it starts really lubricating well so we take a little of the paste and it sits on there it's better for drilling down but anyway so I've got my elbow on top of the brake rotor I'm using that to kind of press it up and I'm just trying to really get it at a 90 degree angle I stick my finger in there I'm going to check and I can see I've got just a little bit of room to get through um, before getting into that ABS unit so Light pressure at first. Man, that bow blue stuff's just nuts. That's awesome. Get a little bit more on there. I, I can't tell you how much I love this stuff. Found it at the industrial supply store and it was just like, wow, I'm not afraid to drill holes anymore. <coughs> I'm about through here. So I'm holding the drill such it won't run away from me. I'm using a cordless so it's not real torquey here. There we go. That's it. I'm using a 2564 inch bit and that's about uh, 2 hundredths or 1 50th of an inch oversized. The other place we have to drill is for the bracket. We've got this bracket that's going to fit right into here. So I've got these all lined up with the washers and everything just like we're going to use it. What this does, it makes it so that your shock doesn't top out. If you hit a bump and your suspension goes up, 
it doesn't hit the limit of the end of the shock. These factory shocks aren't real great to begin with, but when you have them sort of, they're not long enough and it really sucks. Okay, so we got to get this in there and lined up so that we can mark the back hole. Let me show you what I mean. In the back you can see where there's a hole right there. So we're going to do the same thing with the bow blue. We're going to uh, line that hole up. I'm going to take a hammer and a punch, just bam, make a dent so I can get my uh, drill bit started. I'm just going to cruise right through that with that bow blue. And you may be thinking, I'm not going to bother drilling a hole. I'm just going to bolt it in there and that's good enough. It's not good enough and let me explain why. When you have this in there, it's going to want to do this and it's going to create play and rattle and knock and all kinds of problems with your suspension. When you tag that in there, now it can't move anymore. It's locked in place. So that's why the whole fuss with this. Other thing you could do is maybe weld a little bit on each side, but over time that'll stress and break. So it's better to just bolt it in. Now of course it doesn't mention this in the instructions, but you're gonna have to pull the caliper and bracket and rotor and everything. You got welds and things on the sides. Uh, it's not supposed to stick out on the side, but mine does, so I'm going to have to hit that on the bench grinder. I'm pulling the calipers and rotors because I'm a control freak like that. Best thing to do with these little clips, these are the OSHA clips so that the rotor doesn't fall off and kill a worker when they're putting the truck together. Because they're on these racks, bumping around, going overhead. They can't afford that liability. So you just grab a hold of them and yank with your side cuts. Real trucks aren't bought, they're built. You know, you've heard that about Jeeps, I'm sure, but trucks, I think it applies even more. Like, gosh dang. I paid 800 to have the chrome wheel package and chrome grill stuff on here. Okay, be holding on to this thing by now. Set this up on top. You don't want to ruin your brake hose if it falls. this off. Now we've got all the room in the world to drill our hole. We can do a nice controlled drilling and feel good about it. Put our bracket in place. I'm going to just put the bolt in it for now. Obviously you can't mark or drill with a bolt in the way. You can sure line it up where you want it and feel good about drilling a hole there. Once a hole's in there it's hard to redo it if you did it wrong. So to recap, I ground the weld on this to go in there, lined it up, the bolt fits in there great, that's important. We're going to take a paint pen and mark where the hole is, I'm just going to make sure I'm perpendicular and just do a circle that way. Take a punch, or in this case a masonry nail, small hand sledge, so I hit harder than, you know, I'm basically I feel like a sissy, I don't want to hit my fingers or anything. I want it to hit extra hard even though I'm not swinging it far. So I've got that in there. I've got some uh, bow blue paste on my drill bit. Nice sharp bit. Get right in that mark I made. That's where I'm happy I'm doing a slightly bigger drill bit. Once that thing gets hot it just really cruises through the metal. keeps the bit really cool as long as you keep the material on it. If you're drilling down it runs down the bit and that really helps. If you're drilling sideways or overhead you have to redip. Go into it with speed. And we're through. We'll rotate this back in there. Brass hammer and tap it back home. Buy aftermarket shocks that are longer, then you don't have to mess with this. But that's not what I'm doing, so I'm messing. Looks like I need to come down a little more. This will hold the bracket so that it guides the drill bit in better. I'm going to do another dip in the blue stuff and just go through with both of them. And lo and behold, the hole in the bracket is bigger than 3 8 as well. That'll work. Well, the hard part's done. 
For me, I always hated drilling stuff, you know, until I found the bow blow. I was using motor oil, all this other stuff that smelled real bad. This stuff puts off a little smoke when it first gets warm, but there's a lot less smoke and there's a lot less stink and a lot less hot shavings going everywhere. It's just, it's awesome. I can't shut up about it. They didn't pay me anything. I just like it that well. Okay. Let's send this home. Now we take our barrel and our washer. I don't know if it's probably better to just go from the back side here. Once you suck that in there tight, it doesn't want to go in. I might have to go in with hand wrenches and redo that. You can't get away with this. Alright, so take the pry bar and we'll shimmy it out. The air holes don't line up so good with the factory new hole. I was a little bit concerned about that, but figured it would work out one way or another. It will, it's just not as clean as I thought it would be. The racket's good, but it's not that precise. So we'll go back in and tighten that with a ratcheting box wrench. That's just the way it's going to have to be. That'd be tough to get that exact, or to get that precise unless you fabricated it on the scene here. Whatever. Moving right along. Get this in there too. See, once this is in, it blocks that bolt. You can still get in there with an end wrench, straight up and down, and then use a ratcheting box wrench to tighten in the other side of it. I've got this bolt in there. It's all the way sucked in this way. So i got a 9 16 open end from that side, and I've got a ratcheting box wrench on this side. So I'm going to suck it in real good and tight. Torque it down good. Tap this to get it out. 7 8 inch open end on this side and a 21 millimeter on the other. Let's send this one home. Go home. So these brackets you got to be careful with when you send this back up. You don't want to pinch anything. But when this comes up it's going to go this way. It's going to curve up and uh, it'll take the shock no problem. And then we'll use the stock hardware, the stock bolts that we pulled out before for doing the top part. On the driver's side, so on our flag nut we don't have a washer. The flag is the washer. So we got a washer on our, what is this, one and a quarter by three eighths bolt. And then we've got another one. It's uh, one three quarter. And it's got washers on each side. So when you look at this thing, you can see that it's got holes on each end of it on the bottom. And that's going to be where our little alignment uh, tab is. So our alignment tab is either going to go this way or it's going to go this way. That's all fine and good. When we look at our white mark that we made, our white mark shows that our alignment tab needs to be uh, used on the back side of it, about right there. So this either needs to go this position or it needs to go 180 the other way in this position. And looking at the hole that we drilled, I can tell that it's going to need to be in this position. So that's the way we're going to do it, just like that. And you can see that these, you can sneak it in from the side, but you can't with the flag nut one. So we're going to run our bolt and start that way. We're going to run this bolt up here so I'm not juggling any extra weight. I'm going to drop a washer on it, I'll drop a nut in there, and we're going to use those side cutouts to our advantage and let this hold the weight of the thing while we do the other one. Put it in this way. Mm -hmm. And now I can hold it against there. Well, these ratcheting box wrenches are a boon to mechanics. Okay, so that's kind of holding this in place for now. Alright, so we're going to stick this up in here. Apologize if you can't see, I can't either, so don't feel bad. There we go. Alright then, pull this out of there for now. I'm going to use it in a minute. Get a little flag nut in there. It's spinning that with the fingertips. Well, I'm glad I shaved my nose hairs the other day. Sure came in handy, didn't it? You're welcome. I'm not saying this is easy to get this in there. Just saying it's doable. Well, it keeps wanting to wander that direction. 
you know, the open end wrenches thing. Boy, that ABS pump makes things a little tough. I'm not so sure it'd be any faster to go this route than to just pull the ABS pump up and move it. It's just messing with it's intimidating for, you know, some mechanics. And certainly so for some DIY Dodge owners out there, I'm sure. Now all these bolts need to do is just hold this in place so that it doesn't, say you're jumping over a big ditch like uh, the little mule and romancing the stone. John Wilder! I cannot help you, I don't have a car. All I have is a little mule. So you catch air like that, you're going to want these to stay in place. The other thing is it just keeps it from rattling so that this metal and this metal don't play ornery. Let's get them to play nice. That's right, getting in there tight. Thought I'd be here all day. It looks like I'm just about there. I don't know why I like that sound. I don't know if I like that sound any better. A spring falling over. It's got a lot of tone to it, doesn't it? I'm a little nervous doing this because I got to drive pretty far to go to the sheriff's department to do my shift tonight. And my motorcycle's no good on the freeway. You got to take the freeway to get there. So that's it. It's in. That's the passenger side. So let's throw our spring into place. Got our alignment tab here. So we lost a little bit of alignment, but not much. And the bottom one's uniform all the way around, so it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as you index the end of the spring properly on this upper one. Let's move you over here where you can get a better view. How about it? No additional charge. Oh, you can see the jack handle and all the action. Okay, we're in. Going up. I think this was twisted on this to begin with. There's a little bit different indentation. I'm starting to think it's not as critical to get it exactly on. It was like that. Those marks show that this was way spun around like it didn't even matter. Make sure these are up and out of the way so they don't get in trouble. You can see the alignment's not right on there, but it looks really good here, and my alignment's good here. And this is close enough. So I'm going to just be happy with that. You can see that the bottom all the way around here is very uh, flat. There's no extra little... You can see the mark where that one goes. And it's just flat. It don't care. Uh, everything else looks pretty good. So I'm happy with it. When you look at my ABS control unit, is everything good there? Get my thumb in there. It feels like it's fine. Let's get some light in there and... See what it looks like on camera. We got all the clearance we need. We're not into anything. We're in great shape. Starting to aim the stud there. Let's go in nice and slow. This all is lining up really pretty and looking nice. We're in great shape. Time to jack it up. We go one side at a time, one and then the other. I've got the tie rod put back in. That's about all I've done so far. I'm just watching the sway bar, I'm watching the roll of the springs. If you get one of them that's behind the other one that you want to, you know, bow out. You don't want to get hit in the face with a spring or something stupid. Alright, we go to the other side, we'll do the same. Haha! <laughs> Where's your hair? I shaved it again. This one you can see looks like it's kind of sticking out. I have the shocks pulled to the back side here. They don't like it being there, but it keeps them away from your ABS sensor wire and your brake hose. Try to get everybody to play nice on this game. It's probably close enough we can just put these in there. It's starting to be fun. There we go, put this back in. Pretty much just need to put the shock back on on this side because like I say I already did the tie rod. Gotta do our eight millimeter bolts, gotta do the vent line. This goes together the same way it came apart. Grab the base of it so it doesn't move. Regrip it. Regrip it. That's just to make sure that it's not tearing getting pushed into the boot. Snug it up. If you do the shock first, then it's hard to get the bolts on the uh, brake lines. Look how chewed up the threads are. They look like crap. 
I don't know what the reason is for that, but they sure do. It's like the holes weren't threaded very good or something, or somebody put them in crooked. Sal Saltillo or Stolito or something. Mexico is where this one was built. And this truck only has like five, six hundred miles on it. It's not even a thousand miles yet. Everything should be clean and perfect and nice. No one else has worked on this but the factory. Of course, now that I've been through it, I'll get blamed for everything. Hooray! The lines are in, so I gotta get the shock to collapse a little. I know that I should do this when it's lined up. That's what this bracket's all about, making sure it just doesn't top out. Well, it ain't topping out, it didn't want to go in. Heavy duty trucks are tough to, that's what you want. You want a really stiff shock or you'll have a crappy ride. That's the problem with the tough country ones that I've had. They're too soft and then it's just, they don't dampen. That's, that's your, you have one job. <laughs> that's it. And they don't do it. Get that to go down in there. Brackets are a little too tight. Insert the dowel part and get it to go down. That seems to be good. See if we can get a bolt started. Maybe it's the extreme angle, I don't know. I'm not liking it though. This concept is reasonably sound, but I'm starting to question it. As far as it's such a pain in the butt to get in. Ooh, that's not good. So that's hitting the lines now. That's coming in right at the ABS stuff. I don't like that. Is there going to be room? It's right on the bracket, so it's not going to chafe the actual line, but I don't like it. What can be done here? Let me pry this and make it move up a little. So let's get the ABS wire out of the picture. We don't jack it up. We don't want to be prying on it. The brake line we can mess with a little. That's what we're into. It's these little vice grips that work. Set them about line width. See if we can redirect this and aim it closer to the frame. Grab the whole thing without squishing it. Put a little curve to it. There. No contact. No problem. There we go. Perfect. The bolt was actually hitting into the line, and so I had to reroute the line. I had to twist it and get it to go that way a little. That'll play. That'll be quiet. I'm going to turn this back the other way because I'm going to do all the same thing on the shock on the other side. ABS lines and brake hoses are looking good. Nothing's hitting, nothing's rubbing. Track bars are a lot like really pretty girls that are a little out of your league. You gotta work out a little bit. So what I did, is I took a pry bar and I worked through the hole. I could feel from the back. So I make sure it's jacked up all the way because any separation is gonna cause that track bar to be a little bit off. Taking this off before you get started is gonna help. So we have our track bar back in there. It takes a lot of fight because you gotta work with all the way to this axle um, and the weight of the truck. Um, but once you get that in there, tighten it down while you still have the 27 millimeter socket on your impact gun. Go back here, because you have it jacked up all the way, these aren't holding it, they're just there for safety now, which means this bushing is in the right position to tighten down. So check and make sure it's not gonna hit anything with that flag nut on the other side. Let's go easy on it to begin with, until it finds a home. Now you got the middle sleeve that's being pinched in there, that's what we're tightening down on. Then you got all this rubber and then the outer part of it. So what we're doing is we're pinching that inner part in the relaxed state of, uh, you know, just like it's sitting on the ground. You can see the stands are here for safety but they're not holding it up. All the weight's being held at the differential and at the four wheel drive areas where it's beefed up on the axle. To get the front part to go forward, and that helps get the spring to behave. You've got this little arrow here. See the arrow right at the hole? So it was right dead center between those two. 
So with the axle jacked up, it helps uh, get some of your caster back. What caster does is it helps the wheels to want to go straight. So when you let go of the steering wheel, um, it goes straight down the road. Jacking it up by the axle part and having this support it helps helps twist it in such a way that the axle goes this way and so it voluntarily if you loosen it first it goes to about this position and that's where it's happy so I'm gonna go ahead and set it for that and you of course you want to match in both sides and they do that's where they want to be so this is a good rough alignment part now the other part of the alignment that changes at least as far as I can tell is because of the track bar um, it's a little bit moved this uh, will change a little bit so you're going to have to do some adjustment on this all this one does is the centering of the steering wheel everything else the toe and all that is all held together by the front one so it'll still drive straight just your steering wheel will be crooked and you can correct that yourself here in order to do this i forgot to mention these are ridiculously tight and you can't get onto them with the impact um, and the adjustment for this one is back here you do that by hand and the bolts notched you can see how it's kind of notched to move the cams together you can see the outside one matches it's just the same um, but you have to loosen the bolts you loosen this one here and this one here just on the outsides so one of these is going to be a one and one sixteenth uh, the bigger of the two i want to say it's this one top one one and one sixteenth and the other one you can get a socket on and it's 27 millimeter so there you go, you can't get a socket here because your shock is in the way and your bracket's in the way. If the shock was, eh, I bet if you pull the shock out, just pull that bottom mat, you could get to it with the with a impact if you had to. I had a request recently, I had a segment in one of my videos, I show how to put a wheel on, it's too heavy for you to lift. You know, it'd mess up your back or it's just, it's tough to get it on there in a controlled way. For one, you don't want to look like a monkey in the shop and two, you don't want to hurt your back doing it. So here's how you do it. You can sit on a creeper, sit on the ground, doesn't matter. I like to sit on the creeper because the creeper's clean. And I got a thing about clean. So take your wheel, line up one of the wheel studs so that it's at the top. Doesn't matter which one. Do the same thing with your wheel here. Get your knee under it. Tip it to the left because that will get it back to straight up. Roll it. You know, grab the top of the wheel. Roll it up on your one leg and then on to the other and then you just kind of screwed in and now your knees and your legs are doing this so that your back isn't line up that top stud get it back up on there and then put a lug nut on the bottom why? because watch what happens when you let go bottom wants to kick out so you get the bottom one on first and send it in there somewhere in the close neighborhood and then go to put the rest of them in. Just put them on. Why do you that eight lug? So star pattern on this doesn't look like a star. It looks like a plus one way and a plus the other way. So I don't have this one in all the way, so I'm going to hit this other one. That gets it on the hub good. And it gets the wheel aligned so that it's centered good.